uh, as they were marching them out. I mean, this is one of the artists, you know, of the arena, the Colosseum, which is built over Nero's lake. Uh, they would march these people out there, and they'd say, if you don't renounce Christ, lion, eat you. And those legionnaires would watch men, women, children, defenseless, torn to shreds. And they would die singing. They'd die looking up, praying. And they had this supernatural peace. Wow. What did Jesus say is going to help them do that? Well, he says, look at, at verse 8. Hey, I'm the one, I'm the first and the last. I was dead and I came to life. You're sharing in my sufferings. Uh, what, what did, uh, do you remember what Paul said in 2 Timothy 3.12? Yea, all that are godly in Christ Jesus. Is that second or first? I might have a typo here. 2 Timothy 3. Oh no, it's right. 2 Timothy 3.12. Yea, all that are godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Not some. All. You know what's interesting if you read the whole letter to the Smyrnans, Smyrnians? He doesn't promise they'll escape with their lives. You know, we love the, the happy ending movies where at the last minute they get rescued. Jesus said, be faithful unto death and I'll give you a crown of life. L look, look what he says. Uh, he who has an ear, verse 11, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches if you overcome, you'll not be hurt by the second death. Back up to verse 10. Don't fear any of those things that you're about to suffer. The devil's going to throw some of you into prison. You're going to be tested. You'll have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death. I'm not going to rescue you. And I'll give you a crown of life. Wow. What's the lesson? I wrote in my journal. Throughout history, God has used the persecution of his church to advance the gospel. What, what did the Lord want them to do? Number one, in verse 10, Jesus said, Do not fear. Do you know what the most repeated negative prohibition in the Bible is? What does God say, don't do that most? Fear not. That's the most repeated negative prohibition in the Bible. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not. Why? Because God has not given us a spirit of fear. That's what Paul told Timothy. So what's the realm of fear? Who runs the fear realm? Satan. And see, when, when we can get paralyzed by fear, when we live in fear, that's what's so wrong. It seems like Christianity, none of you are old enough to remember, but we went through this Y2K thing. It was called Y2K. And all the Christians thought the world was going to end. And so what did the Christians do? I don't mean all of them. I mean a vast majority of them. Well, I was pastoring in Oklahoma, and I know what a lot of people did. They bought way out in the country places. They stocked them with diesel and generators and enough grain to feed 200 people for 400 years. And they dug wells, and they had gold and machine guns, and you wouldn't believe the stuff. I visited some of these places. In fact, I lost a dear friend because he invited Bonnie and me to come with our eight little children and come to his compound. But he said, once you come in on Thanksgiving, you can't leave until Y2K is over. I said, wait a minute. I said, if Y2K, you probably don't even know what Y2K was. They said all the computers at once were going to turn off and the electricity would stop and the water would stop and every plane would fall out of the air and the world would end. And I thought, wait a minute, I've already read about this in the Bible and what we're supposed to be doing is running out there and trying to lead as many people to Christ as possible. How can you lead them to Christ if you're in your compound with machine guns to keep them out? And we lost that friendship. And they did go to their compound. And they did drop off the radar. And no one knew where they were. And they survived Y2K. But they lived in what Jesus most often tells us not to live in. Fear. Don't fear. So, make a choice to stop fearing. Jesus understands that Satan uses fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 God doesn't give a spirit of fear. So Jesus shares the most repeated negative prohibition, fear not. Why? Because Jesus goes on to say, the devil can cause bad things to happen in our lives. God knows how much we can endure. You see, 
We learn that in Job. Do you remember Job 1 and 2? I'm sure you've already covered the book of Job. Job 1 and 2 is one of the greatest passages on the cosmic battle going on. And if I was teaching the book of Job, I'd tell you all about things Satan can do. Satan can affect the weather. He sent a tornado and destroyed the home where Job's ten kids were. It says a wind came out of the woods and destroyed the home. Who did that? Satan. Satan sent fire from heaven and destroyed Job's servants and the flocks. Satan can bring fire down from heaven. How do we know that? Read Revelation when you read it this week as your assignment. You're going to see that the false prophet can call down fire anytime he wants, and Satan can send fire. Do you know what that means? Signs and wonders don't just come from God. Remember how Moses said if someone does a sign or a wonder, don't believe them unless what they say aligns with the Bible? This is the proof, not the sign, not the wonder. This, the Word of God. Jesus limits Satan's harm to us. But Jesus asks us if we would be willing to lose our earthly temporal life in exchange for permanent heavenly life. Now remember, it's kind of like the whole argument. I do a lot of Q&As. I love doing Q&As uh, where people ask questions and I show them from the Bible how to answer that. You know what one of the big ones is? Uh, is cremation okay or not? That's a big question. I, in fact, I think I know the top 100 because I've heard them. Questions. Do you know what cremation is? Cremation is rapid rotting. <laughs> Human bodies rot. You know, they decay. When they're put in, well, after the formaldehyde wears off, gradually they decay in that box. So either you oxidize slowly in decay and going back to dust, or rapidly, rapid oxidization is called burning. Slow oxidization and decay is called rotting. And so I know that the pagans uh, cremate and all that, but basically the body's going back to dust, either fast or slow. So what I'm saying is we're all going to die except for those that are alive and remain at the coming of Christ. And so if you can choose between saving your life and saving all your stuff and moving to the compound and keeping everything safe while the world falls apart, Jesus said, whatever you hold on to to the end, you'll lose. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll gain everything. And so that's what prompted Jim Elliott to go to the AUKUS. I mean, he knew he was probably going to die. If you ever heard of him, you know, through Gates of Splendor guy. That's, that's what made all these pioneer missionaries do what they did. Because they said either we're going to go the slow boat and rot or we're going to burn out. And so we're going to burn out. Now, God doesn't call everybody to that. And Jesus specifically said, if they persecute you in one place, flee to another place. He never said, stand there and be killed. But he said, don't deny me. So if they've, if they've chained you up and said, either deny Christ or die, you say, okay, I won't deny him, I'll die. But if they haven't chained you and they say, if you don't go through that line and worship Caesar, we're going to kill you, you can flee to another town. Your fleeing means that you confess Christ and you're able to share the gospel with them. So, see, Jesus limits Satan's harm to us, but we're supposed to, in our heart, be willing to lose everything. How do we do that? I mean, verse 11, if you overcome, you'll not be hurt by the second death. How it says it in Hebrews 7.16, I love Hebrews 7.16, we live after the power of an endless life. I like how my mentor, John McCarthy, used to say it. When he flew on airplanes all the time, like Bonnie and I do, you know what he used to tell the person next to him? He would sit there studying his Bible, and the person would say, what are you doing? He says, he says it's a good thing you're on this airplane with me because it's not going to crash because I know God's not done with me yet. The person would say, what did you just say? He says, good thing you're on this airplane with me because it's not going to crash because God's not done with my life yet. I know that I have to finish teaching through the whole Bible, so it's not going to crash. I wouldn't do that. That's a crazy thing to do, but that's how assured he was that he had been called to Grace Community Church to preach through every verse of the Bible. And he just finished recently, so I expect his plane to crash, you know. But, uh, you know, what's amazing is that we live after the power of an endless life. We, we will live forever. 